it's that uh, time again for another tier list. The last one came out a little bit later than I wanted to, so I'm hopefully kind of trying to get that back on track. So basically, I, with this, I'm going to be going over the upcoming month and basically give my like my thoughts, predictions of how I think it's going to shape up, or at least very least how it is like right now. And as you see right here, we got tier one, 1.5, two rogue, and everything else. Now this format has been really crazy. Half of it good, half of it uh, not great. But we'll get to that in a bit. And Dex has just been topping out of random. And just without further ado, let's just get right into it. So first, Adam Anticipator got a, got another top, but it's not really changing my opinion on it much. Adam Anticipator. Out of Mance Peter is a deck that basically always has potential at the top. It's always something you need to at least be mindful may come up. I haven't seen it like top too often. Like it got a top like a maybe a week ago or something. I don't remember what it was at an event, but do I think that's likely to happen again? Yes, but not by much. I just don't think it's good enough to be put into a tier 2 yet. Uh, Infernoids, I haven't really been doing a whole lot, so it's so it's kind of in the everything else category. Abyss Actors, following their two tops at the Las Vegas Regional, they haven't really been doing much, so I'm going to put them in the everything else for now. But since they did top, they most likely can top again. Adding Nister, no. Unfortunately, in a very hand trap heavy format, Addicts and Surge doesn't ha really have much of a shot. Maybe once uh, hand traps chill out, maybe Addicts and Surge has a shot, but until then, I don't think it can. Uh, Tri Brigade? Um, I'm going to put it in tier 2. I think it's stronger than Rogue. It's, it's definitely a stronger deck than Addict Emancipator, but. It's definitely been on a pretty heavy decline. It still tops here and there, so... Uh, Dragon Link. Tier 1.5. This deck's been... Relatively... Kind of like staying at the same place. It's getting... Tops pretty consistently. Dragon Link, I think it's... I wouldn't say it's like a, the best deck of the format. It's like a tier 1.5, tier 2. I'm putting it in a tier 1.5 for now. It's definitely a deck that you are going to have to keep in mind how it does. It is seeing a good amount of play, sadly. Uh, Flandries. I'm going to put Flandries in a tier 1.5. It's one of the best decks of the format, but I wouldn't say it's the best deck. It's definitely something you are going to need to know how to play against. Because that Ben is just that good of a card. And not to mention Rise Again Cheaper, that might mean more Flandries players. So... Definitely something to keep an eye out. Cosmo. It hasn't done much since its last top, so everything else. Virtual World. Actually, I'm putting this into a tier 2. It's kind of... Actually, I'm, I'm putting it in a rogue. It's definitely gotten real quiet. Like, I haven't seen Virtual World top... I think maybe like once or twice. Kind of like the same amount as... You know, actually I'm putting it in tier 2. Seeing around the same amount as Tri-Brigade. Guru Control. Doing another thing. So staying in everything else. Uh, invoked Dogmatica. Or should all invoke Dogmatica. This one's really hard to kind of... Guess because... Dogmatica and Invoked are still seeing play, but I feel like some variants are kind of dropping shadows, some aren't. So it's really hard to tell, like... And... For me, it's just been kind of all over the place, like... I'm seeing Dogmatica, Eldritch, Despia, Invoked... Ugh. Like, I'm just seeing decks split splashed here and there. As far as the... This combination... I put it in a Tier 2. Well, yes, it is seeing play with Despia. Not by a whole lot. Like, I feel like that's just not the best version of Despia to play. But it is still seeing play nonetheless. Uh, Plunder Patrol. 
pretty solid rogue deck. Like uh, like Adam Mass Parrots, capable of getting tops, and I can't really say I know much about Plunder Patrol. Still, like I still don't know the deck, so I don't know. I haven't really gone against Plunder Patrol, so my experience with this deck is absolutely zero. Solomon Greats, still rogue, although considering on the upcoming ban list that may change, depending on how much they want to bring Solomon Greats back. Sky Strikers, a solid tier two deck. It's definitely been getting its tops, and it's only going to get stronger over time. Uh, Cyberdark's got a top, and, but I don't really think that's... It may happen again, but I'm just not too confident in Cyberdark's. Phantom Knights, Rogue. Honestly, when uh, the adventure stuff initially came out, I thought Phantom Knights was going to be everywhere. Surprisingly, it is not. And honestly, I've even gone against Adventure Phantom Knight, and they just really haven't been impressing me too much. Little like Tri Brigade. A rogue strat. I still think it can top, and I will still say that. Just because, I don't know, it's just a really fun deck for me, and definitely a very powerful deck if you've seen the boards that it can make. Dinos, no misc, no luck. Deities, they had a small amount of hype. I feel like it's quieted down a little bit, and then kind of resurging a little bit. It's kind of going all over, so I'm just going to put it in a comfortable tier 2 right now. Uh, Despia. I really hate that I have to put it here. One thing at my locals, the last tournament I went to at my locals, three out of the four of my matches were some version of Despia. It's definitely not making me too excited for the upcoming format, because one thing I hate is when a deck is way too prevalent. Like uh, when Orcus was the best deck. That's all I ever saw. It got to the point where I was just so tired of Orcus. Like, you play Thunder Dragon, Sky Striker, Salman Great. I'll take anything but Orcus just because I was seeing it way too much. Like, I feel at this point I need to start maining Super Poly. You, you know it's bad when you have to main Super Poly. And the thing is, Despia, there's more than one ways to play it. Like, you got Invoke Despia, Despia Eldritch. I even saw one mixed in with Dual Avatar. Yes, you, you heard that right. Heroes, uh, it's a very solid rogue deck. Like, you can do some cool things, you can end up missing. It's definitely a deck that's been at a rogue level. Basically, same power level as these decks. Uh, Unchained, everything else. It's a really cool deck, but I just don't think it has that potential to be any higher quite yet. Zombies. You got top, but I don't think that's likely. Well, it probably will repeat, but not. I don't think it's as good as someone like Adam Atspater, Solomon Mangrate, or Heroes. Life Twin. I believe this has rogue potential. The cool thing with uh, the Live Twins is that they can play a bunch of hand traps. Cyrel Lich. I don't like this deck. I really don't. Or Base. Or wh whatever you want to call it. Base, Cyrel Lich. The 60 card pile deck. Honestly, I'm just not a fan of that deck in general. I don't like it. I don't like... It's not really an archetype. But think... But... And it's really... It's a really good deck. So I definitely think it's like around the tier 1.5 range. Uh, Drytron, Rogue. It'll get a top here and there, but fortunately, without Ava, it's not really going to be doing a whole lot, thankfully. <sighs> Konami, please do something about this deck. I, I'm not exactly so much as opposed to Floodgate Trap decks or stuff like that. But when they're this high, it's not a good thing. Skill Drain 2-3 was a mistake. And Eldritch is just really annoying to play play against. You can't really hand trap it that much. Like, what does Effect Fairy want to do? Imperm, he'll laugh at that. Droll, eh. Nibiru, ha! It's a deck that I just don't really think is fun to go against, and unfortunately it is one of the better decks of the format. If you notice, I've been saying that for three of these top decks. Yeah, I'm not really too excited about this format. Just that's just me. ABC. 
it's been getting tops, so it does have potential to top. Um, the one unfortunate thing with ABCs is it has have a tendency to brick. That's really one thing that's kind of holding it back a little bit. But Dolce has got a top. But Dolce is, is a it's a, Dolce is it's a very interesting deck. Like I feel like for the past two years, the tops here, tops there, it's kind of been in the same place, Rogue, everything else. It just hasn't quite broken the tier two range. And it's a deck that's really close to it too. Like I feel like if you were to give it one good XYZ monster, then it might push it, but until then. Dynamorphia. Honestly, at the end of the month, I'll probably be saying something different. Right now, it's everything else. It's good, but it's just not good as anything in the rogue category yet. That's the big yet. However, the uh, new cards that are coming, I think they're coming out in Dimension of Chaos, Dimension Force, whatever it was. The, the next set after Ghost from the Past. Then I definitely do see this deck. I could actually see some competitive play. Goki got top, but it's one of those decks that can top every here and there. But it's still not really worth playing some of the other stuff. Sword Soul, tier 1.5. Nothing's really changed. It's still a really good deck. Very solid deck for the format. And uh, lastly, Despia and Prank Kids are essentially the two best decks of the format. A lot might change after the forbidden, after the ban list, but but Prank Kids has definitely been very interesting, seeing uh, how they built it, because they've been like playing 50 card variants of this, all sorts of weird things with Prank Kids. It's a very powerful deck. Essentially, any Prank Kids is a one card starter, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my uh, tier list. Let me know what you think, what you agree, what you disagree. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video I make. Bye.